Hey guys, welcome back to Genius Learning. So in this part three of projectile motion, uh, let's get a better understanding of what we can do with these vector equations and how we can make life simple for ourselves in solving projectile motion problems. So let's remember a couple things. So if we launch something at an initial velocity, okay, then we can represent it as v naught and the x, which is v naught cosine theta, and v naught and the y, which is v naught sine theta. Okay, so that's just initial. Um, and these are initial in the x, that's initial in the y. So this is x hat, that's y hat. Okay, and so let's, let's look at this example here. We have we have something being launched, okay? Let's say, uh, let's say a football, whatever. Vector initial is equal to five meters per second, okay? So football is thrown, spiraling, okay? And it lands right here. So this is the X final or the position final where it lands. All right, is launched at an angle of 30 degrees. And let's say it was thrown 50 meters away. Okay, so those are the details that are given to us in the problem. And we're asked for the time it takes to land here. So let's write here the time final. Okay, so that's the question. We're given the angle, we're given the initial velocity, and we're given that it landed 50 meters away. All right, so let's remember our displacement equation. So displacement is equal to velocity initial vector times time plus one half a t squared. And all these are vectors and so remember that this displacement equation gives you um, a kinematic equation for the X and it gives you a kinematic equation for the Y so displacement in the X and displacement in the Y okay so this is how we're gonna use it all right so this part is very important when you have a situation like this Okay, the displacement vector always starts from the initial and goes straight to the X final or the area of interest. Okay, so exactly where it ended. And so that's where we're gonna draw our displacement vector here. Okay, this represents D vector. Okay, so from the origin of where it left all the way to the end, that's what we're gonna do first. Then what we're gonna do is this next vector, okay? So you guys remember the vector triangle, it was displacement, okay? It was V naught T, and then going down here was one half A T squared. Okay, so this is the vector triangle that is associated with this equation. And so we draw our displacement, okay? We draw our velocity, t vector so it, it goes all the way up and it ends right where the displacement vector ends okay so we get it right there so that is v naught t and then our final vector is always okay very important always pointing down vertically and from the end of this velocity times time straight down to the end of the displacement vector okay and that's one half a t squared okay so this is the triangle imposed on your projectile motion problem and this is how you can use it all right so because you have a 90 degrees here right we can just use trig in order to deal with these vectors Okay, so 
we can just do sine theta, right? Sine of this angle is opposite, so one half a t squared, and we're gonna change this a here into g, okay? Because we know that going down, right, the only thing that is going down in this direction is gravity, okay? So ax would be zero, ay is equal to gravity, okay? So we're gonna change this a here into gravity. So always try to understand that this vector, the reason it's going down is because gravity, right, is negative 9.8. Negative is in the downward direction. So it makes sense that this vector is always pointing downward, okay? So sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, okay? And we can eliminate one of the t's, right? Let's rearrange this and solve for t. So we put that on this side, we got v naught sine theta, okay, times two, divided by g. Okay, so this is time final. And we have all these values, right? So t would be equal to two, this is gonna be five sine of 30, and gravity is negative 9.8, okay? Or we're just gonna put 9.8. We don't have to put the negative in this situation because the vector equation, right, shows us the direction of this vector already. It's going downward, which is negative. So we don't need to include it when we're writing trigonometric identities. So we're, I'm not gonna put this in the calculator, but this would be the time final. And so that's one way to find it, okay? I wanna show you the other way to find it, to show you how much more work it is to find it using kinematic equations, okay? We have, we have here a, another vector equation like this one, okay? And so it's very important for you to learn this. V final vector, V initial vector plus acceleration times time. Okay, so this is the same thing as this equation except it has different values, right? But it's a vector equation. So if we look at it in XY coordinate system, we're gonna have V initial here. We're gonna have our V final here. And going down like this, we're gonna have our A T. Okay, so again, I'm gonna show you how to break this up into two parts. This V final is broken up into V final in the X, and this V final is broken up into V final in the Y, okay? So then we're gonna do V initial in the X, right? Plus acceleration in the X times time. And for the Y, we're gonna do V initial in the Y, plus acceleration in the y times time. All right, so we already know that there is no acceleration in the x for this type of projectile motion, right? Nothing's accelerating in the x direction, so this is zero. And we know what v naught x is from breaking the initial velocity into components. So v naught x, or v initial in the x direction, is V initial times cosine. So this is gonna be V initial cosine theta, okay? So let's hold that right there. Now this equation over here, 
we do the same. We know that V initial in the Y is gonna be V initial times sine theta. So the final is gonna be V initial times sine theta. Okay, and here, acceleration in the Y, we already know that that's gravity, okay? So we're already gonna write the negative on the outside and G times T. Okay, so here are two equations that we're able to use to look for stuff just like this vector equation here. All right, so let's, let's look at this for a second here, okay? If I have my projectile flying across like this, okay, the same, same drawing we've been doing. Um, let's say I have a V initial, I have a theta, okay? So this vector triangle could be drawn just like this vector triangle here that we learned from this one, except it could be drawn in a different place. It could be drawn right up here. Let's say I want to know right here specifically what's going on in terms of velocity and initial velocity or, and time. So what I'm going to do is this velocity vector, I need to keep the same. So that one's going to be just like that, right? This velocity initial. So we'll keep that vector the same. And then we know that the acceleration vector is always facing downward like that okay so this one here and this one here are always facing downward so you know that it needs to be like this okay and i'm gonna write the gravity term so i'm gonna write the acceleration going down as gravity and then our next vector, which is the velocity final in the Y is gonna be in this direction. Okay, so what does this mean? We have a right triangle here. Now, velocity final in the Y, think about when the ball leaves and reaches its highest point, it's no longer moving up in the Y direction, okay? It's actually V final in the Y direction is zero. It's reached its highest point. Okay, so it only has velocity in the X direction. So remember, I said that an object that's moving has velocity in the X and has velocity in the Y. When you reach your highest point, you're not climbing higher anymore. And so your velocity in the Y direction has stopped. It's zero. And so we can use that in this equation here and write V final in the Y is zero, right? This is at the highest point, the highest point. This is zero, only the one in the Y. The velocity final in the X direction is not zero because that's why the ball keeps moving towards the right. So the velocity, the velocity of the ball in the X direction keeps moving towards the right. But in the Y direction, it stops, so it reaches highest point. So that's zero. And then we could just write this, the rest of the equation down. Okay, and then from this equation that we got from the Y part of our displacement equation, I mean our velocity equation, we can rearrange this to find time and we're gonna get V naught sine theta over gravity, okay? So this is how you would find time, but for the highest point. You see the difference between this one and this one is that this time here is the time it takes for the halfway point and this time here is the final time of the whole flight. So that's why it has an extra two here. And so this parabolic shape is gonna be uniform. And so this side here is gonna be equal to the other side. And so we can just multiply it by two because 
this side right here is gonna be equal to this side right here. All right, so the time it takes for it to go from here to here is gonna be the same time it takes for it to go from here to here, okay? And so all we do is multiply the highest point time by two, and then we, we have the final time on, uh, on, both, on both equations. So again, I'm just trying to show you that this displacement equation, we can find the final time of a projectile motion, and we can also find the final time of a projectile motion using this velocity vector equation. Okay, so these two are very important and you should learn them and harness them in your heart because these two right here are gonna be the easiest things you use when doing projectile motion problems. And so let's do some more examples so it can get a little bit easier, um, but try to understand that this vector equation is for velocity final of both x direction and the y direction. And this displacement equation is for both displacement in the x and displacement in the y, which I showed in the previous video. Okay, so let's, let's keep going with some examples.